Hi, I'm Doug Van Zyl, Superintendent of Schools, and this is Everything You Need to Know in 194, where administration shares with you what's taking place in our district. This week, we're gonna be discussing the budget and the budget situation that we're facing. One of the questions that we hear often is, how did we get where we are? This is something that's been taking place over the last several years. Back in 2018, there was the intentional idea to be able to spend down our fund balance reserve. That's continued for the last several years. And then situations such as COVID, inflationary costs, costs of substitutes, transportation, and some other areas have grown. Because of that, we haven't been able to keep pace with the revenue that we generate along with the expenditures in those areas that I just mentioned. That has all led to the situation that we're in right now. Another question that we get quite often is about the general fund and why we're not able to move some dollars around in our budget. School finance is very different than your ch personal checking account or mine. There's a lot of restrictions and areas that we have to follow based off of this guidelines from the state and federal government. Those dollars are restricted and have to be spent in those specific areas, such as special education, early learning, and areas such as that. The general fund is basically our savings account, which gives us the ability to make sure that we're able to stabilize our budget, and if their needs arise, we're able to use those dollars one time to be able to offset some other expenditures in our finances. The other question that we get is about the financial reductions that has been recommended to the school board. In general, basically we're trying to take a look at a system-wide approach where we're not impacting one area more intently than we are another. So we've taken a look at district office, administration, elementary school, middle school, and high school levels, along with areas that maybe we haven't had some consistency in through across our district, which are district-wide uh, systems that may be related to a number of situations in regard to the number of students per building and the number of staff per building, where we're hopefully able to equalize the situations across our district. Another item that we get asked about is where did this information come from on how we're trying to address these reductions. This has been a team effort. It's not been done in isolation. We've tried to use information from the staff surveys, from community input, from our task force, from administration conversations, and just overall taking a look at our budget and areas that we're overspending. So again, this is something that we're trying to do in partnership and collaboration with numerous groups. Another area that gets discussed quite often is what does the timeline look for this situation? So we've been working on this for numerous months, trying to gather the information. The information has now been presented to the board and we're trying to meet the contractual deadlines and areas that we have through our policies as well. So March 15th was an area we were shooting for, but the overall budget process isn't finalized until June 30th. We'll continue to share information, hold board meetings and have discussions until we're able to get this finalized. Our goal is to try to get this done, not in a rush, but in a timeline that meets the needs of our staff, students and community. Another area that seems to be a hot topic across not only our district, but across the state is what's gonna happen down in the capital. Will we be able to be bailed out financially from the state? As we take a look at what's being proposed by the governor, he's proposing 4% increase for this coming year and it's followed by a 2% increase for the next year. As we know, and take a look at our financial situation, 4% would generate just short of $5 million for us. That does not include numerous things that we have to address as we move forward, such as contracts that we have to negotiate and, and build upon, along with the utility costs and just the cost of living inflation that takes place in a school district. So to be able to say that that would be a situation where we would be bailed out is probably not accurate. In order for us to continue to move forward, we need to know what's gonna take place with legislation. There are numerous bills that have been proposed that have a direct impact on our school district and school districts across the state. Many of them are unfunded mandates. There have not been fiscal notes added to them. By not having that dollar amount known, we are waiting to be able to say that these numbers will actually be a negative impact to our school district. Several of the bills have multiple million dollars of impact to us. So even if we do get the 4% from the governor, there are other legislative ideas that are out there that would actually take money away from our district. We'll be trying to include a list of what those legislative ideas are for you to be able to take a look at. I would encourage you to continue to contact our legislators and remind them that public education needs to be fully funded and supported. So in conclusion, one of the things that I would like to share is that I definitely realize that this is not an easy situation for any of us to be in. There is not anything that we do in the school district that does not have a direct impact to our students and success that they are able to achieve. These are very personal issues because it is something that does impact people. We are in the people business 
And when we move forward, we want to be able to do so knowing that we've tried to do our very best to protect and support the families, students, and staff within our school district. This is also something that we have to do together. It's not something that can be done alone. We know that we can continue to rally around each other and support us as a school district as we continue to move forward and look to the future of the great things that this Lakeville area school district can continue to do.